Okay, in the last uh, session we ended here, we expressed the focal point equation as a continuity equation and, uh, and we uh, wrote the expression for the current both for the Ito interpretation and the Stratonovich interpretation which is uh, uh, slightly different, this G in the Ito interpretation is inside the derivative uh, okay, now uh, we are interested in solving this equation. This, this equation, to solve this equation, um, the, the time behavior of rho is not uh, easy for uh, arbitrary f and g, but it is um, uh, easy to calculate the stationary solution, at least for some cases. In the stationary regime, In the stationary regime, what we, what do we have? Well, uh, the stationary regime is when this uh, does not depend on time anymore. So uh, what we have is that the partial, the, the derivative of rho with respect to t is zero. So this means that um, this is zero in both cases, in Mitter and Saturnovich, and this means that the current is constant. Okay. So this means that uh, this is this is normal because the current is in a continuity equation. The the change uh, the, the the time derivative of the mass in an interval. You know, if you integrate uh, the this equation uh, in a spatial interval between a and b, the 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 change in the total in the this integral is the current in b minus the current in a. You know, the current evaluated at e minus the current evaluated at B or, or depending on the sign. Uh, so this means that constant means that every 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 probability that enters into the interval also uh, gets out of the interval. This is the idea of uh, a continuity equation and the stationary solution must be of uh, constant current. If this constant is different from zero, this means that the whole process, the whole probability is is, is moving in one direction. This can happen if you have some non-potential force or, or, or a constant force, for instance, or a non-potential, uh, a non-confining potential, for instance, things like that. Whenever the process X is confined in a finite interval, uh, in 1D this constant must be zero. So the most important uh, solution is when, when the current is zero, this is called the zero current solutions. And usually, as I said before, is, is, is the, 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 only solu the only stationary solution of many uh, stochastic differential equations. So let's, let's uh, try to calculate this, uh, this uh, zero current solution in ITO. First, we do it in ITO. We have that this is zero. So f rho must be equal to sigma squared divided by 2 and the derivative of g squared rho prime. This is a simple uh, first order differential equation with only one variable because we don't have time any, any longer. So the, the, the uh, fastest way is trying to have here the derivative. So to divide uh, by g squared rho. So if we divide two sides by g squared rho, in the right hand side we, we get g square g square rho prime divided by g square rho which is the derivative of the logarithm of g square rho and then here we have to uh, multiply i mean you have to divide by sigma square here and since i divide by g square rho i have g square now this is easy to integrate because I have the, the derivative of the log of g square uh, rho. So the log of g square rho is the, in, the integral of this uh, term. And now g square rho is the exponential of this integral and, and rho would be 1 over g square rho, g square, uh, this integral. So I have the integral. Now you see what I have done. I I integrate this part. I integrate this this equation, so I get this integral, and then here I get the log. So I get the exponential, and is the log of g square rho. So I have the g square here, and this is a normalization constant. 
and this is the solution for the it interpretation. So you see that uh, when you just have to solve this integral to get this is a close expression for the for the probability. For the Stratonovich is very similar. Uh, instead of uh, of uh, the g the derivative of g square, you have g derivative. So instead of this term, what we have is g and the derivative of g rho prime. But we we can do the same trick. The trick now is to get instead of to get here g we 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 divide by g now. Not by g squared, but uh, sorry, by g squared to, to get rid of this g. So we divide two sides by g squared, and then uh, we get here g rho, and here we get again uh, the same thing. So uh, this was for Ito. Uh, now for Stratonovich, we get the same, but instead of uh, g squared in the denominator, we, we get g. Actually, we get because the, the probability is positive, we get the the absolute value and the same thing and you see in all these expressions g is in the denominator so let's uh, uh, say a couple of things about what happens if g uh, is zero no if, if g of x is zero in those points so at those points where g is zero let me erase here are called boundaries and why is it so well uh, because if um, if g vanishes in a point this means that in that point the the x dot is well defined is, is f is deterministic and suppose if f is positive at that point so this means that the x dot is is positive so the uh, at this point the 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 process the x can only cross from left to right, it cannot cross because because at that point the derivative points to the to the right, so it can cross only one direction. So once the process crosses this point, it can never go back, and this means that in the stationary regime, the 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 region where the process can can go back cannot go back, will have no uh, the, the probability to be there is zero. So this 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 divides the interval in two regions. One uh, is maybe visited in the transient regime, but not in the stationary regime. And every point go, uh, every state at the end. Uh, I mean, finally, eventually, will go to the region, uh, to that region. The same if f is negative. And if, and if f is zero, so at, at at some point you have g equal zero and f equal zero. This means that x dot at that at that point is zero. So this is an absorbing point. When, whenever you reach that point, you can cannot escape. You will see uh, this in an exercise in the exercise number one, where you have uh, uh, at x equals zero in, in in x equals zero, f and g vanish. So uh, this is an absorbing point, and you have to study the stability of this point. You have to use for Ito and Stratonovich. You have you will use these two uh, equations, and you will see the 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 meaning of g equals zero that this can be sometimes can be uh, an interval um, uh, divergence or not and this will uh, you will get a lot of information out of this of this um, exercise okay so let's do an example which is again this very simple one uh, let's look at the brown and overdamped particle. We will see in a minute uh, all this, um, uh, the, the whole theory of Brownian particles, underdamped, overdamped, and so on. So if you have a uh, Brownian uh, overdamped particle in the potential, the, the corresponding Langevin equation is, is this one. And we already have seen that uh, the Einstein relation uh, tells us that this is 2 gamma kT. We have seen this in one example before, but we will see it now in a moment as well. So this has the form of a stochastic differential equation. Here, f is is uh, is one is f is minus b prime divided by gamma, and g is one over gamma. So let's let's write this equation. Now there is, there is no any any problem with the interpretation. Ah, uh, remember that the two interpretations, if g is constant, the two interpretations are equal. Because well, well, 
I've written here n and n, but of course this this uh, normalization constants are different from Satanovich and Ito, so this is a, a normalization constant. So whenever g is constant, uh, it, uh, it, all this is a normalization constant, and, and everything is involved in the, in the you can put everything in the, in a normalization constant, and the two the stationary probability distributions are equal. So let's let's calculate the um, Let's, let's apply these formulas no, to the case. Uh, now I, I write the normalization constant at 1 over z. So now I have the exponential of 2 divided by sigma square and the integral of f, but f is minus b prime, divided by gamma. And now divided by g square. g is 1 over gamma, so I have gamma 2 to the power minus 2. So this is the expression. Now, a gamma cancels here with a gamma. And if I use the Einstein relation for sigma square, another gamma cancels as well. So I get, and the two cancels with the two, so I have only kt. And I get exponential of minus b kt, minus beta b, okay? Which is the stationary distribution on equilibrium. So this equation, this Langevin equation, is consistent with the fact that uh, the system thermalizes. This we, we already knew that because this Einstein relationship is is obtained in this way. It's obtained by imposing that this Langevin equation has a, a, a stationary uh, solution, which is the Gibbs state. We, if I remember well, we 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 re derived the Einstein relationship from from the key partition theorem, but it is the same. It's always by imposing the stationary regime that this process X reaches the Gibbs state, the equilibrium state. Okay, now uh, I would like to... Uh, ah, first, uh, let me generalize this to several variables. There are many possible generalizations. One way of writing um, the stochastic equation for many variables is to to, to uh, introduce a vector. Now everything is, a, is this will be a, a vectorial field, and this is also you can have many noises as well. There are different possibilities. Let me write the equation for um, for. Uh, for, sorry, uh, let me write the equation for uh, um, independent noises. Uh, you can have it also for dependent noises. You can always, if you have a collection of Gaussian noises which, ha which are have correlation, uh, correlations, you can always uh, make a linear transformation of those noises and it's essentially to diagonalize the covariance matrix and then to get independent noises, but uh, okay. We will apply this to a single case, but it's good maybe for you to have this formula. So, um, um, I will write the Fokker-Pan equation for the Stratonovich uh, the probability distribution. It's, you can, well, this is also for Ito. You can always uh, write the Fokker-Pan equation as a continuity equation. And now here, instead of minus the derivative, you have minus the divergence. But the, the interpretation is the same using, using um, I think it's a Stokes theorem. If you integrate this over a region of space, then you will see that the variation of, the, of this integral is the integral over the boundary of this region of the current. So we have the same interpretation. And um, this is the Fokker panic. This is the the, the, the current for Stratonovich. For Ito, is uh, I, I will not write it for Ito. You have this this term, which is the one that we already saw. No, is this is the the total mass times the velocity of that mass. No, because this is the. So here you recover this. This this term is uh, is harder to interpret. Huh? But you see that. Um, uh, when you apply this, you have the divergence of G and again the divergence of G. So this is again an, an operator square. But I will not enter into details. I will not write the ITO because the ITO has a problem which is, is non-covariant. Is non it's not covariant. 
So um, it cannot be easily written. Uh, you have to write uh, coordinate by coordinate, which is a, a bit uh, annoying. Well, we will apply all this to uh, the brown emulsion. So let's uh, and actually uh, I will focus uh, on on some type of brown emulsion, which is important for optical tweezers. So uh, for brown emulsion, we already have seen the Langevin equation, the underdam. So this is the most, the, let's say, the the, the, the basic Langevin equation, which is Newton's equation. So mass times acceleration and equal to forces. So we have the external force. We have this, which is the friction. This is the typical expression for friction, minus gamma the velocity. Gamma is the friction constant. And then what, what Langevin did, in, it was to uh, introduce a stochastic force, which is a Gaussian white noise with uh, zero average. And the dispersion is given by these two gamma kT that we have seen. The force usually we will we will assume that derives from a potential, and the friction uh, constant. Uh, if you go to uh, there is a whole theory for that. There is a Stokes derived an expression for gamma for fluids in the laminar regime and uh, for spheres. So this is the the friction coefficient for a sphere. A is the radius of the sphere and eta is the, the viscosity of the fluid. This is for a Brownian particle in a fluid. Okay. So to write the focal plane equation, we don't know how to do it for second order differential equations. So let's split the, the second order differential equation, the Newton's equation, into two uh, first order. So we have x dot equal b. The velocity and v dot equal this and, and we have divided by the mass here so we have the we can apply the the focal plane equation for several variables the one that we have uh, written uh, in the last transparency and if you remember it's um the derivative now is the derivative of the, the probability density is a probability density of x and v so we have the divergence of the deterministic part. So we have the divergence is the derivative with respect to one coordinate times the force affecting this coordinate. So this is for x. And now we have the divergence terms for v, which is now it would be minus the force here, but uh, I've written here plus. So I have the friction and the external force. And now uh, the, the, the part due to the noise, which is sigma square, sigma square is all this, divided by two, so these two cancels. So I have gamma kT divided by m, uh, and it was g square, sorry, so it's m square, and the second derivative. And this is the focal plane equation for the underdamp Langevin equation. It's hard to solve. Well, for for linear forces, you can even solve this using Fourier transform and things like that. Uh, but the stationary regime is very is as expected because this is uh, what one would expect. The stationary solution of this equation, you can check it. Uh, is the the Boltzmann state now uh, taking into account as well the, the kinetic energy. Okay, this is the Langevin equation. We will not go further uh, with this equation. We will introduce now the overdamp limit because uh, we have already talked about the Langevin equation, the underdamp, the overdamp, and so on. So, what is the overdamp limit? Is 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 when when a particle is in a fluid. And the friction is much higher, much much stronger than the inertia. So you can neglect the inertia. Uh, you know that inertia plays a role, uh, for instance, when, when, when a body falls in, the, in, in, in air and in gravity, uh, you have some inertia, so you have some acceleration, but at some point you reach the terminal velocity where the friction equals the force, the, the, the gravitational force. 
Uh, this is the overdone limit is a particle that it is in 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 in, in a fluid with such a strong uh, uh, the friction that the particle is instantaneously in the in the terminal velocity all the time. Or in other uh, words, you can neglect this term here. So uh, what happens is that uh, the velocity is equal to this equation, obeys this equation, and this is the overdumped. Daniel equation. I have written before a uh, psi tilde the noise because it's more common to use the overtime limit. So now psi is psi tilde divided by gamma. So what I have to do, remember that it was 2 gamma kt, now I have to divide by gamma square. So this is um, this is the dispersion of the noise in the overdump uh, Daniel equation. And one gamma goes with the other gamma, so I have two kT divided by gamma. And usually also we use the the diffusion coefficient, which is kT divided by gamma. So this can be written simply as two d. This is uh, because you remember that in focal plane equation you always get sigma squared divided by two, so we will have two d divided by two, so we will have d in 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 all the focal plane equation. So um, uh, this is yeah when when uh, this is the case of a particle in a fluid. So it will be, for instance, if we are in a in in a fluid which is like honey, and uh, but this is the case for a small particles. When you have micrometer particles or a smaller particles in um, with normal densities in water. For those particles, this is like like if we were swimming in in honey in honey. So um, this is uh, for bacteria, for instance, and for proteins, uh, for molecules in water. Uh, the the overdam limit is, I mean, is is uh, the is uh, typical is very accurate. So you can take safely the overall limit for uh, particles of micrometers. Uh, for nanometers, no, for, sorry, for, for proteins is not for nanometers, you need to, for nanometer particles, you already need, uh, you, you do need to consider the inertia. Okay, so this is the underdam Langevin equation, which is very popular. Uh, you, you can do, again, the fogel pan equation, now it's simpler because it's only for x. This is this, this is actually is easier to manipulate. Uh, you can solve it and and you get well. This is what we have done before. Let me just uh, remind that uh, this is called actually we got this equation in the first lesson just using on Sager um, uh, linear uh, linear linear irreversible. Uh, thermodynamics. You, you can get this equation as well. So this equation can be obtained in many ways, also from Boltzmann equation. So um, uh, you have um, this term is usually called drift, and this is diffusion. And you see that d appears here as the diffusion. When when the force is zero, you get the diffusion equation, which is the equation for uh, for 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 the Wiener process. Actually, we will see this in a moment. The stationary solution is, of course, the now we we write it in terms of of d, but as we have seen before, this is nothing but uh, the GIFs state with the partition function. And now uh, it's uh, interesting for the free particle. You see, for the free particle, if if we go to the under dam limit, we get this equation. We have already seen this equation in several examples. This is called the orsten ullenbeck process. B is the orsten ullenbeck process. And what happens if we, if we apply this overdump limit in the equation? So we only have gamma V equal psi tilde or B dot equal psi. So this means that V, sorry, this, this, dot, this dot is not there. So the, we get v equal equal the noise. So so the the velocity is white noise. 
And of course, the velocity noise, the integral of the white noise is, is the position of the Brownian particle, uh, which is Wiener. So the Wiener is the position of a overdamped Brownian particle with no potential force. Okay, uh, now I, I will uh, study this more in detail in the when F is there, it's a harmonic potential, it's a quadratic potential. So, and this is important because uh, this is this plays a very important role in, in optical tweezers. Optical tweezers are uh, it's a device that concentrates a lot of light into a very small region of the space. And particles mm, with some transparent particles with a, 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 a refraction index different from the medium, the medium usually is water, um, then these particles, because of the deflection of, of photons, because they deviate photons, then the, these particles exper ex experiment a force that attracts the particle to the to the to the center to the focus of the light, to the beam, to the center of the beam. And these are called optical tweezers. And this, those particles they feel a potential, an effective potential, which is quadratic. It's kappa x squared. And, and kappa is uh, usually called a stiffness of the of the trap, of the of the optical trap. You will have um, uh, as a kind of uh, exercise or extended exercise, or uh, is. We can call it a laboratory experience, although you will not go to the laboratory, but in a, you will uh, work on a video taken from a real optical tweezers to analyze the Brownian motion in this potential. The optical tweezers are also nice because uh, you can measure forces, the forces exerted by this potential with the precision of pi, pi, pico newton, pico newton and, the, and the position with the precision of the order of nanometer. So pico times nano is 10 to minus 21, which is uh, of the order of kT. And uh, so it, it, optical tweezers allow one to study uh, processes where the energies are of order kT, which are very important in biophysics, for instance. So um, we will study the overdamped case. So the Langevin equation is this one, and this is a linear equation. So one would say, ah, we could apply some, for linear equation, we have Fourier theory. So let's try to apply Fourier theory. And this is what we are going to do, but we are going to do it in a way of uh, trying to interpret things uh, in physical terms. And one of the important uh, points of this equation is how, how, the, how the process dissipates energy, okay? We have seen this before. If we look at the energy, which in this case is just potential energy, so it's one kappa, uh, one half kappa square, and we study how this energy, how this energy changes in in time, uh, the average energy. We use Itolema because we know that it is much easier. Itolema is kappa x x dot, and now uh, we have the Ito term, which is sigma squared divided by 2, in this case is d, times uh, the second derivative of e with respect to x, which is kappa. So we have this. Now we replace x dot. We get this term. And now we average. And we know, because we are in the Ito interpretation, that x psi is 0. So the average is just this one. So the, the dissipation is proportional. This is the dissipation. And this will be the, uh, the input energy that the fluctuations, the, 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 the energy that the fluctuations put into the system. But this is the dissipation. So uh, usually this is, this is dissipation per unit of time. So this is uh, usually called a dissipation. Uh, sorry, in the stationary regime, well, this is all already something that we have seen, but in this, in the, uh, this is called a dissipation power. That's the power because it's, it's energy per unit of time and it's uh, at, 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 uh, at which rate we are dissipating um, uh, energy to the, to the environment, to the fluid in this case. This happens in many applications uh, of, the, of this stochastic differential equation. For instance, in, in electronics or, in, or in, a, in, in, circuit, in the theory of circuits, this could be a voltage 
and the voltage uh, has a very similar or based a similar equation in some circuits and voltage square is also a dissipation so uh, in many cases x is a signal and x square is is a is a power is a, is a, is, is uh, the power of the signal so um uh, people study this dissipation this power and in the stationary regime uh, we are interested in the average power so uh, we have we have the power We have the, the the power. Let's call it now the power of the signal. Although in our case will be dissipation power, which is x square. So if we want the the in in the stationary limit, this will be constant. But uh, if we have some transient, we want to to calc to average this over an interval of time. For convenience, we use minus tau tau. It could be zero from zero to tau the integral. So this is a, a, a an average a time average over the over the power. So this is a, an average power, and this is the dissipation power defined in the stationary energy. So this is an important quantity. I don't I, I didn't put this fluctu this constants. I put here that uh, the dissipation power is proportional to that because mm, this is a very theory, very general theory that it can be applied to other mm, uh, systems where the dissipation is proportional to the x square but the dissipation constant could be maybe a, a resistance or or any different constant so mm, what people do is to uh, to define the dissipation uh, the dissipation uh, uh, so people define, sorry, this is not, uh, no. So people define dissipation as, as this quantity, as x squared divided by eight. Although this has no, uh, in our case, this has no uh, units of uh, dissipation, of, of power. You have to multiply x squared by kappa square and by gamma to get uh, units of, of, um, of power. Uh, but let's say but let's let's work with this expression now okay uh, uh, as i said before we want to uh, study this using uh, fourier transform so there is a nice uh, ident uh, nice uh, identity between this integral and the fourier transform it it is a bit tricky because mm, you know well you know you probably have heard about the parseval um the Parseval um, identity or theorem that tells us that the that you can calculate the norm of a function either in the in the real space or in the Fourier space and it's the same. The Parseval uh, identity is that this is equal to this. Here we have a little uh, we have a one divided by two pi because we have defined because we define the 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 Fourier transform like that. There are many possibilities. We are going to call this the finite time Fourier transform. And this is the Parseval theorem. Uh, let me some comments. Some, some people define this as one over a square root of two pi. In this case, you don't need the one to pi here because the Fourier transform, if you define the Fourier transform like this integral, one over two pi, one over the square root of two pi, then is unitary. So the norm uh, in 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 real space is equal to the norm in in frequency space. But um, but we have decided. To do it without the one divided by two pi, and then there is two pi here. Okay. And the second uh, thing is that the, the second comment is that this is a finite time Fourier transform minus tau tau. So this is why we indicate it like that. And this really represents that the fact that this integral is over over an interval minus tau tau. So it's like if you multiply x of t by a window, a window that it is only it's one in this interval and zero over uh, elsewhere and then 
uh, the Fourier transfer is given by this. Okay. So this function, when you do the, the Parseval theorem, you apply this to the Fourier transfer of the function x and multiply by the window. This is the idea. Okay, so this formula uh, is nice because um, it allows us to uh, to define the the spectrum density. So sometimes not only in in the theory of uh, Brownian motion, but also when this is a signal, no, you have this could be a voltage of uh, of um, this is. Typical in communication theory, in electronics, and uh, in many fields, that you have a signal. This signal has uh, some energy. Which, if the signal is stationary, this energy is, is infinite. So you have to calculate this. You have to to characterize the the energy by a power. So and this is the power of the signal. Now you have the power expressed as an integral over frequencies. So you can define, I mean, you can identify this as the energy which is due to the those frequencies. So this is the power spectrum density. It's, uh, it's this part, the limit 1 over tau, 1 over 2 pi, this is 4, 4 pi tau of this thing. So uh, when you multiply the power spectrum density by dW, you get the energy uh, that the signal has uh, due um, in this interval of frequency. In this, in uh, the case of the Brownian motion, it's not the energy of that the particle has; is is the is the dissipation uh, due to those frequencies. And this for experimental analysis is very interesting. So the power spectrum density is very important. And it has this, this, um, this interpretation. So let's analyze this uh, power spectrum density in detail. Let's, put, let's write again the definition. And now uh, I will uh, write explicitly the two the two Fourier transforms. So if I have um, this is the modulus, so I have the uh, I, I have expressed the finite mm, time Fourier transfer as this integral. Now I have to conjugate one of those, and in principle I have to conjugate as well the signal. And now average, so this would be the, the the expression of the of the power spectrum density, and here you immediately recognize the correlation. And in a stationary process, it, this is called autocorrelation usually because it's the correlation of the process with itself, and is depends only on the difference of time. And this is going to be very important because this is uh, allows us to do uh, try to uh, do here you see here everything depends on t minus t prime and this depends on t minus t prime so we could try to make a change of variable t minus t prime and the other variable could be the same so we have to go here so now now the integral will be easy, easier to do but we have to the, the the we are integrating over this domain so when you change the variables, the limits of integration becomes a little bit messy, no? Because you are integrating over this this variable, the diagonal, and uh, but you can prove. I will not do it in detail. I will not, uh, that um, if you make this uh, change of variable in the limit of tau going to infinity, because you can imagine that in the limit of tau going to infinity, this goes to really uh, very big square. So uh, you can replace this by an integral uh, between minus infinity and infinity and between minus tau and tau. This is the Wiener-Kinchin theorem. 
And now, uh, when you integrate T2, you get two tau, which cancels with this. So you get um, that the power spectrum density is uh, the Fourier transfer of the correlation with a factor of 1 over 2 pi. This factor of 1 over 2 pi depends on the... Some people, instead of omega, uses uh, the normal frequency. Uh, I mean, frequency in hertz, so this this changes a little bit. If you use, uh, as a definition of the Fourier transfer, 1 over the square root of 2 pi, then this also changes. I've decided I used this, this con convention of the Fourier transfer without the 1 over 2 pi. And uh, so it, you will see many versions with the slight changes in the prefactors. Yeah? But if you, the, the, the way to really understand everything is the, the parsable theorem. This is important because this is, this is the reason why you define the power spectrum like that, the power spectrum density, and then just to do this, these calculations. Okay, so this is the wiener kinchin theorem. And the, this is important because now we have we have two expressions for the power spectrum density. We have one expression in terms of the Fourier transfer of the process, and another expression in terms of the Fourier transfer of the correlation. So this is nice, and we apply this now to the to the to the Brownian motion. So let's first calculate, which is something that also we discussed when we introduced the, the white noise. Let's calculate the PSD, the power spectrum density of the white noise. Uh, and now we will use the second expression, this expression, which is uh, nicer. Because we know exactly for the Wiener process, for the white noise, we know the correlation. The correlation is just the delta function. So we introduce this, and then we just get. Sorry, this will be t. This will be t minus t. This will be t minus zero. So this is the delta of t. So this is one at t equals zero. So we have sigma squared divided by two pi, or d divided by pi. And this is a flat spectrum. A flat uh, power spectrum density. Okay, now let's try to calculate the power spectrum density for the harmonic oscillator. Now we will use the second, uh, the, or, well, the, 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 the first, uh, the, the, the definition. So we will have, uh, we have this equation. Now we can uh, apply the, the finite Fourier transform, the finite time Fourier transform. We will apply this expression to calculate it. We apply the Fourier transform. Uh, remember that the Fourier transform is this one. So for for the derivative, um, we can do what usually we do for any uh, for for to to find the expression for the Fourier transform of a time derivative. We integrate by parts. Here you have this. This term is not zero, but it will vanish because at the end of the day you have to mm, divide by tau, and this will be finite. So the only term that remains is this one, which is there is a plus. This is an integration by part, so this is a minus, 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 there is a plus i omega x. So we have the same result. As for as with normal uh, normal Fourier transforms, but in this case uh, these terms appear, but at the end when you calculate the limit it will vanish because it's finite. So let's uh, rewrite the let's let's perform the Fourier transform of the whole equation. We have this now. It's easy to solve this for x tilde. I will not put the x tau. There is a tau here, of course. This is finite time, but this is a, this is a, I, I skip the tau because now it's, we have this thing. So if we if we put here uh, the Fourier transform, we will get the Fourier transform of the noise divided by 
for pi tau, which is the p power spectral density of the white noise. So we have to square this, and then in the numerator we get the power spectrum density of the white noise, which we know that it is 2d, or sigma squared divided by 2 pi, sorry. So we have this, and the, and the modulus of the denominator is omega squared kappa kappa. So this is the power spectrum density of the position of the overdamped Brownian particle in a harmonic potential. This, this function is a Lorentzian, has this shape. It has a decay for big frequencies, which is omega 2 minus 2, and, and, and at 0, the value is that one. But it is more common to write it like that. The, the most common way is to write it with d, and defining kappa divided by gamma as omega c, this is called the corner frequency, because it's the frequency where this starts to decay. So you see, if omega is much smaller than the corner frequency, uh, this is a constant. And if omega is much bigger than the corner frequency, this, is, this decays. And, and these two regimes, a constant and decay, here uh, it's hard to so see the, the constant regime, but if you do a log log, um, a log log uh, uh, plot, which is the typical one, this is log in, in frequencies and log in, in the power, the spectrum density, you have this shape, and this is why it is called a corner. No, this is the corner. And this is a real one. This is real data obtained with the motion of a random particle in an in a optical twist. You will repeat this uh, in, in, the, in this laboratory experience that uh, you have to do for next week. It's also, for experimentalists, it's more common to, to write the power spectrum density in, for, not for, for radial frequencies, but for um, angular frequencies, but for frequencies in hertz cycle per unit of time. So you know that um, since this, uh, is, this is a density, the two densities for frequencies or for angular frequencies uh, are, are uh, Related like that, omega is 2 pi f, so if you introduce this, you get 2d divided by 2 pi square. And this is the, uh, the corner. So from, from this data you can get, and this is, this is what you, have, you are going to do with real data, you can get from the uh, corner frequency, you can get kappa and gamma. From here you can get d. So you can get a lot of information of the Brownian motion for optical twists using this uh, this power spectrum density. Do we um, finish this uh, lesson? It has been a long lesson on stochastic differential equations with some um, brief uh, ideas on how to simulate in the computer uh, uh, stochastic uh, differential equations. So if you have one equation like the one that we have been studying uh, in this lesson. So we have this white noise and uh, the noise could be multiplicative. So how can we uh, discretize the equation to uh, write a code in the computer? Well, the, the simplest and most naive algorithm is, is the Euler algorithm. The Euler algorithm is the one that we use for ordinary differential equations and consists of up updating uh, the value of x using the differential equation. So we have the previous value with discretized time, of course, and then we have uh, the force evaluated in x of t, the time delta t, and t, the, the stochastic force evaluated at time t times delta t. There is a first problem here on what we should put here. Remember that the the, the, the white noise uh, is a Gaussian variable, but with infinite dispersion. 
But we also saw in the, when we introduced the, the white noise that in fact this delta of t minus t prime in the in the correlation, when you discretize, uh, is 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 uh, re reflects the fact that uh, that the 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 Wiener process. Remember, the velocity of the Wiener process is something. The increment goes like delta. The increment square goes like delta t. So when we divide by delta t to, to try to calculate the derivative, we get something which diverges as one over square root of, of delta t. So the correct, if you go back to this definition and to this discrete version of the of the white noise, you will see uh, this is something that we already uh, mentioned at the beginning that the white noise, in fact. Is something with a dispersion. Sorry, this should be sigma. Let's erase here. This is sigma. This is the dispersion. So um, this means that the the quadratic dispersion is sigma divided by by delta t, and this is this is the correct. Um, discretization of the delta of t minus t prime that appears in the correlation of the white noise. And of course we have to take the in each step we have to take so for every t we have to take an independent random variable so this psi of t is a, 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 a series of, of Gaussian uh, random numbers which are identically distributed and independent, independent and identically distributed. So this is uh, the Euler algorithm, and we can uh, simulate this equation by using this algorithm. Of course, the question is, uh, this simulation will correspond to Ito or to Stratonovich? And the answer is is very clear here. So this will be this is a, this is an independent this is a random variable that you get every every time step. So it will be independent of this one. So we this is. We are actually evaluating the process. The, you remember that this, this, this is the, the when we integrate the equation. This is the stochastic integral, and we are evaluating the 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 function in the stochastic integral in the first step, no, and the first st in the in the first uh, time. So this is Ito. So it is not surprising that this will converge to the Ito. Um, Ah, sorry. Usually we we express this in this way. So we usually we we, we put um, uh, the sigma. Uh, we, we, z z t is is a normal function with zero average and one and dispersion equal to one. So we get here. From this psi, we we get out the sigma and the square root of of delta t and the square root of delta t times delta t uh, yields the uh, square root of delta t so this is this is the usual uh, euler algorithm for um, stochastic differential equations and as i said before uh, this uh, x of t is independent of z t so this uh, converges to the eto interpretation. So when we uh, do a Euler algorithm, we obtain the solution of this equation interpreted uh, as eta. And of course, this is in the limit delta t going to zero, so it is an approximation. And the, you know that in, in discretization of, of um, ordinary differential equations, there are a lot of problems of stability and things like that. Here we also have even more problems sometimes, no? But uh, this is um, discussed in papers on numerical simulations, very technical, and we will are going to just give a couple of ideas. So um, you can think of other uh, algorithms more sophisticated, like Runge-Kutta. Uh, one of the simplest Runge-Kutta algorithms is the, is the so-called Heun's algorithm or predictor corrector and the idea is to use Euler algorithm to predict the value so this x uh, star is just the the Euler uh, uh, the result of applying Euler algorithm to the to to our equation 
But now uh, we don't uh, get this. We use this uh, prediction as a way to calculate the real uh, value, the final value, which is the following. We 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 increment x t by by the force by x dot. But in, now instead of as in Euler, we evaluate it in x of t. Now we can evaluate the force. F sorry uh, F in 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 X and in X star, and this is what we do. So we calculate we we evaluate F in X of t in the previous uh, point, but also in X star, and we average these two. So we get an average of the two F evaluated at X of t, and F X star divided by two. This is a kind of average F, which is more accurate. Uh, this is a, 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 a there is a family of of algorithms which are the runge kutta uh, algorithms and this is probably one of the simplest ones and we do the same with the noise part uh, so we do the same here this is called predictor and this is called corrector because we correct this is this initial Euler value by using the average of f and the average of g and the rest is the same you, you will use z t and delta t the only trick here is that this z and this one must be the same because you are really imagine you are really integrating for a realization of the noise so it doesn't make sense that you use two different variables for the predictor and the corrector you have to use the same one for the predictor and the corrector okay and uh, so if we implement this algorithm, what is the result? Now, you see, now it's clear that it is not Ito because uh, now the, the G, the, this part, this X dot is going to be not independent of Z. This is why we have to use the same Z here and here. Otherwise, this is, doesn't make sense. But if we, if this z is is this one, is the same one, we don't we don't call the the random function uh, twice. We we just call it once, and we use the same z here and here. So this z and this x star are of course correlated. I mean, one is function of the other. So this is no longer independent. So we cannot expect that this tends to Ito. And in fact, one can prove that this tends to Strata knowledge. So when delta t goes to zero, it's a strata knowledge. So uh, I will not, and we will not, we could do some exercise uh, or, or or some, let's say, uh, 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 practical homework to do some simulations, but uh, we will not do it. So in this case, just you to know that uh, when you have a stochastic differential equations, there are two main ideas. The first idea is that the white noise. It must be simulated like that or or like that. So it's a, it's a bit tricky that you have to put here a square root of delta t instead of a delta t uh, if you want to write it like that. And the second idea is that depending on the algorithm that you use, and if you use a Runge Kuta with the Runge Kuta uh, could could use intermediate points between t and t plus delta t and things like that the, the, you have to be very careful because the result uh, depends on the on which algorithm you use so if the, the simplest cases are these two if you use Euler you go to the Ito interpretation to you, you you solve this equation in the Ito interpretation and if you use the Heun's algorithm you go to strata knowledge Okay, so with this, I think you have a, a, a overview of uh, of uh, stochastic differential equations. You have seen that it is a, a, a tricky uh, subject, but I guess that the main ideas, the the necessity, the why we use the white noise, why we need to use this interpretation, Eton Satoranovich. I hope it has been clear. You have the exercise on the bifurcation of, uh, of uh, a stochastic differential equation. It's a, it's a kind of a stochastic version of Hopf bifurcation. And then you have also the, the laboratory uh, experience uh, with the calibration of optical tweezers. And, and, and with this, we finish this lesson.
Thank you.